everyone, welcome to Teller Community Call, Dev Call. I think we'd have it figured out. October 23. Um, the Teller Call. The Teller Call. Um, no, it's a great week. Um, you know, for those of you paying attention, we're, we're doing a lot of stuff. Um, we're, we're in kind of the process of, so on, on the the dev side, the, the big thing is we're deploying a, a new Oracle contract. We're saving you guys a bunch in gas, so um, some like 20%. So can you say reports will be 20% more frequent? Is that safe to say? I don't, I, that's interesting. Uh, that's what I was wondering too, yeah. Does a 20% reduction in gas mean we're going to have 20% more rewards? If they change their I wish it, if they set their profitability differently. No, I, th I think that it will result in 20% profit for reporters. 20% more profit? No, but theoretically, it should be like a market structure that incentivizes more reports. Yes. We're, we're as excited to find out as you are. We'll see what um, happens. But anyway, through giving less to miners is <laughs> validate, or right. ETH validators is always a great thing. Um, so that, that'll go through Wednesday night. If you're a reporter, make sure you, you're going to have to stake on the new oracle contract you can continue to stay on the old oracle contract um there will just be no time-based rewards over there but um we'll be working on getting some new users over on the new stuff um and getting the old users taken care of and then yeah and then other news this week uh we went to what was it manta um manta mainnet manta pacific mainnet Manta Pacific mainnet. And and I actually like, you know, I had never really heard of Manta until they came out, but then uh, a user, the the old Ovix guys said that they're thinking about moving over to Manta. And so it was like, oh man, it's, it's legit. Yeah, they got something going on over there, which is awesome. So we're excited to be working with them and um, hopefully we can provide some, get some users over there. Um, all right. So yeah, let's check in with you guys. Um, Tim, how's things? Um, good. Um, yeah, so I've been running and writing some tests for that upgrade you mentioned, and I'm continuing to like look at, make sure all the parameters are correct for that, for that upgrade. And that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Um, Dan. Um, I am working through a bunch of Go tutorials and trying to get a layer test working. All right. And I'll be a Go expert here by the end of the month. Go Dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, me some paperwork, maybe. Anyway, anyway. stay on after the call, Dan. Okay. So, Ryan? Yeah, I've just been, uh, I pivoted a little bit to get the addresses updated for the data feed, um, hitting a little snag with stuff, Polia, but should get that fixed today. Um, and then I'll go back to the um, the bridge video that I'm working on for light client bridging on uh, Tender. Yeah, and then Akram? I wrote a test for a proposed dispute, um, push that, but I'm going to write another one for submit value in order to, I guess, pick up on that. Somebody else can pick up on that and build on it. And then after that, I want to finish the the dispute mechanism flow. So the whole thing, we still have to be done. Awesome. Yeah, you can walk us through it today. That'll be awesome. Yeah, sure. Uh, he's talking about teller layer, by the way. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, teller layer. Not... Uh uh, Krem's done. He's basically built an entire Cosmos chain in like a month. He's he's killing it, guys. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's looking pretty. Um, so I'm actually doing a deep dive. Uh, you know, the thing I run on Teller Layer, that's on Thursday. Um, so maybe we can talk tomorrow or something, do an internal one if there's any anything we need to update. But we'll be pushing that out so the community can look forward to that. I'm also I have on on Wednesday, so I'll have to push that out sometime later this week too. Pith. Whoa. With pipe pith. Whoa. We don't know. We're gonna find out. 
Uh, I actually I watched like their their tutorial videos and the speaker like switches. <laughs> okay. And I was like, like who depending on who on their team says it, it changes. And I was like, all right. Um, but I think it's Pith. Um, and yeah, so that's that'll be a super cool one because um, they have they have very big philosophical differences and as far as how an oracle should be built, mm -hmm. which is as long as you're you know those are the good ones where you're like you're open to talking about them because you have a valid you have semi thought out mm -hmm. why why you picked this oracle design so those are always good um that's funny that's things this morning i did new releases of telia core and telia feeds because uh we want anyone who's getting into telereporting now, if they pip install Telia feeds and start reporting, we want them to be on the new contract and not the old one. So now that will be the case. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. Um, there's a lot else uh, going on in my brain, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I need to talk about it on the call. <laughs> cool. Um, Mike? Uh, there's an interchain builders chat for some of us to hop into that they sent out this morning. Uh, oh, cool. Um, and uh, yeah, there's been a lot of migration um, people coming in to the Discord and our email. Um, I just want to do like a public service announcement to not use the Teller migration page. Uh, a lot of people are Googling how to migrate and they're following, they're finding our old Medium blog from 2021 and so i just went back and edited that blog so that it doesn't send them there it sends them to the ether scan instructions um cool but yeah if you have it's probably just easier to just message any of us on discord or use the token swap at teller.io email yeah so you can you, you should be able to migrate yourself via ether scan but if there's literally any issues we can also just run the function for you and we've done that yeah so just if you send us a discord message with your address and say you need migrated we, we can help you out and that's sometimes a lot easier for people if you've never done you know running functions on your yeah own, so but it's a great sign obviously people are, are are you know they're coming across yeah teller and they're like hmm let me go check my old wallet oh yeah i have these whole drb tokens uh so it's a it's a good sign it is good um awesome um yeah. So I didn't even... Let's schedule tomorrow at 11, the Taylor layer internal. Okay. Um, we did a lot of updates to the dispute, so I want to make sure we go through that with everybody. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, anyway, thanks everyone for the call. Oh, do we have any questions, Ryan? Yes, we had a couple. Uh... One was about um, what about Cosmos validators becoming also Oracle providers? What is a why is Teller Layer better? Yeah, I mean, I I think this is going to be our biggest competition. Um, you know, like if should the app chain thesis play out, um, the the biggest thing is is like, well, why don't your validators just come to agreement on what a price should be? You know, we'll we'll read five APIs and and we'll pull it in, and you can come. To agreement on it, I, I think there's some reasons that you would want that, and some reasons um, you may not want it. For for some simple things, I, I think that works just fine. But but this goes into like this is like what uh, if you look back there were there were there's been a lot of discussions over the years as far as like why isn't why aren't Ethereum validators actually Oracle providers and Vitalik and most of the researchers have been very against this. They've been, you know, like originally it was just like put an ETH US dollar price on chain and, and why don't you do this? And the problem is, is that you start overloading the social consensus. So if you have mm -hmm. like, let's, let's say you can't come to consensus on a price, this is usually the, the bigger issue. So like you have five APIs and they wildly differ as far as what an ETH US dollar price is. Are you going to be slashing your validators based on this? Maybe. <laughs> if you enshrine it as your validators, yes, you would. Um, you know, you would you would be slashing based on this or, you know, does your chain halt if you can't come to an agreement on a price? This yeah. is, these, these are hard questions for, for an internal chain to deal with. And usually offloading this to another protocol that handles this sort of subjective thing 
in a different manner and, and it's sort of built to handle this um that that's where I, I that's where i think you know price feeds are are moving and then same with a lot of other feeds you know like we're going to need to be more than just listen this is an average of the five apis and go home if you you know if you don't like the median you know we're going to have to have robust architectures in place as far as okay well what do you do when these do differ you know, like maybe we don't come to consensus on something and you have to wait for it. These these are all okay trade choices, but, you know, design mechanisms, but we we have to sort of think these out and for some things it makes sense and some things it doesn't. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that's where, that's where a lot of the space is going just because like, you know, like right now there's very little addition from, you know, mo most of the, a lot of the other Oracle providers are these centralized services, um, they're just a multi-sig that medianizes APIs. If that's all they do, they're going to get internalized by the team's validators. Why would you pay an external service to do this? It doesn't matter. You don't need to do that. And that's why I think um, oracles are going to have to become something more. So, Any others, Ryan? Uh, yeah, I'm in the Teller Layer chat, there's been a nice long discussion about real world assets, kind of sparked by my MS's question. Uh, how do you envision the tokenized real world asset future and what role Teller will play? Anybody here want to take the other side to the argument with my who, who here likes real world assets on chain? Oh. Wow. I like black pilled all of you guys on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you wouldn't download a car. <laughs> I think that's like the best <laughs> answer to it. <laughs> you can't if you if it can't be stored digitally, it's really really hard to like track it on blockchain. Then, I mean, there has to be a connection to a person. Someone's getting life. an IOU. And if there's a connection to a person in real life who owns the asset, you know, you could just call them instead of using a blockchain to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like there's a heavy appetite for a real world use case of crypto. So they're conflating it with like, once you get real world assets on chain, then- It's a real use case. Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it doesn't make, yeah, I think he was using cars as an example. Cars don't make any sense because like, the problem is, is like, who says you own a car? And then right now it's the government. Mm -hmm. They should just run a centralized database because if they change it now there's nothing that if they don't change it on the blockchain it doesn't matter they changed it um so so you don't necessarily need to put it on a chain they can they can run a database just fine and yeah i guess you can you can own a car without registering with the government but you can't drive it right. so uh you know even if it's even if there's an on-chain component to the ownership of the asset it's still registered with this would, other yeah. centralized authority that we all have to live with. Yep. And, you know, like if you steal the car and it doesn't change, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, so do you, need, they, do you need, do you then need an Oracle to, to call up the Oracle and be like, Hey, somebody stole my car right. and verify that. It just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And, and I think sometimes usually the one people are talking about now is treasuries. We're going to put treasuries on chain. Uh, you can go buy you know, treasury bond yield, yielding something. And the problem with that is there's nothing about it being on chain that's special for the actual, like if you just want to buy a treasury, it's more trustless to just go to a bank and buy a treasury than to have a bank put it into a smart contract and then hopefully give you the yield. That's way riskier. And, and wait, you know, like the bank can still, the bank still holds the treasury. They can rug you at any minute, but now you have all this smart contract risk and everything else. Like it's just sort of worse in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, and for people who are like, oh, well, blockchains are more transparent. It's like databases can be tra just as, tra however transparent you want them to be. There's, there's nothing saying that you have to like keep your database private. Like you, you could open it up and just have APIs for reading everything. Like that's, yeah. say, okay. Um, yeah, that's the argument. It just showcases how much this trust there is among the parties not willing to share the data, yeah. which is different. The, the only real, I think I've said this before, but the only like one that I've heard that sort of made sense to me was like whenever they were putting like Honduran land records on the blockchain. 
because they were afraid, like, ultimately it was up to the hunter and government, but they had a history of they would go and just, like, wipe out all the property records. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, then you you wouldn't know, no, you know, and the government would come and steal your land. But then after a new government would come in place, nobody would have any old records to go back and, and say who owned what. So, like, just putting it on chain, uh, you know, like, we, we know that it's not going to hold up in a court of law, but, like, maybe later... <laughs> down the road whenever we overthrow the the corrupt guy who throws all the property records out we can update it and that that's like been the only thing that that makes sense to me but you know like does that make sense for cars probably not uh don't think our government's going to steal all of our cars maybe they will but yeah it's a seductive narrative though if you don't dig into it because it sounds great like oh man we could take the total TVL of all of crypto and now throw in all of gold or something into it and all our bags are going to go up. Or like, what's the market cap of real estate? Let's, let's now. I, I don't mind gold. I mean, gold's like sort of a meme value in the physical world. So like, there's a, yeah, there's a match there. <laughs> yeah, meme it again. Like, just go for it, guys. If there's an on-chain asset that's backed by a real world asset and you buy the on-chain asset, Somebody else owns that real world asset and they can sell it. And then your on-chain asset is worthless, right? I mean, yeah, you can it, you don't. double spend problem. So. Thanks for brain hurt thinking about it. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, and anything else, Ryan? That's it. That's it. Um, well, thanks everyone for the questions. And yeah, we shall talk to you guys next week.